Um, our next presenter this evening is Jessica McDaniel. And again, a lot of you already know her, but I'll let you, I'll let her introduce herself as well. Hey, I'm Jessica McDaniel. Um, so I'm uh, one of the graduate students um, with SEED. Some of you all may know me from Nesby PCI um, and running those events. Um, so I'll be the director of the summer for BVT, which is a summer camp, um, engineering summer camp for African-American students. Um, and she's also helping me out as a co-director with our imagination camp, which is for middle schoolers. So uh, we'll keep her busy this summer. Um, and next we have Taylor Johnson with our STEP program. Hello, um, my name is Taylor Johnson. Um, I am coordinating the STEP program, which is the Summer Bridge program for incoming first year students uh, coming into engineering. And I will tell you much more about that in a bit. And then um, I am gonna just introduce, we have one more person from Virginia Tech with us here with us tonight. And that is Natalia Ayala Torres. She is one of our undergraduate engineering students and she also works in the SEED office. And she is here to um, kind of monitor that chat room um, and any questions that you have kind of direct those to us. So as we're talking, if you do think of questions that you'd like to ask, please don't hesitate to put them in the chat and she will make sure that they get to us. So Natalia, do you wanna say hi? Yeah, hi, I'm Natalia. I'm a sophomore and I just declared construction engineering and management. <laughs> all right, so as I said before, um, I am, I do, we all work for the SEED office and I am not gonna read you this whole long slide with our entire mission statement, but I do wanna highlight the two objectives in maroon, kind of in the middle of the screen. Um, first of all, we do want to recruit students to Virginia Tech to the College of Engineering. One thing we have realized over time that is that it's not enough just to get students here, get them through the door. Um, it is also incredibly important that while they are here, we give them the support that they need in order to be successful graduates. We do know. Okay, everyone, I've got Dr. Lester, her computer. <laughs> Uh, just restarted. Uh, so she is, as it's booting up there, she is going to join us uh, at least temporarily on phone. So if you cannot hear, just post it in the chat. Kim, go ahead. All right. Uh, so I am sorry about that. My computer just went to a restart in the middle of while I was talking. So it is in the process of rebooting. So as I was saying, it is we do want to recruit students. We also absolutely want to make sure that we retain those students. So we want to give them all the support that they need as they pursue their engineering degree here at Virginia Tech. Um, the program that Taylor is going to talk about is one of those supports. And uh, Perry's program Pathways is another um, program that does continue supporting students both during their pre-college as well as college years. The second goal that I really want to emphasize is the one we we know that not every student who attends our pre-college programs wants to or is able to attend the College of Engineering at Virginia Tech. So more broadly, our goal is just to make sure that we introduce all of the students that are interested in to the very broad range of applications that we know engineering offers um, and show them that it can be fun, it can be exciting, um, so that even if they do not end up choosing to come to the Virginia Tech College of Engineering, um, they uh, are able to learn more about engineering and and hopefully in a fun, exciting way that really um, engages them and interests them and excites them um, in engineering. All right, I am getting very close to logging back in. Okay, so what are the goals of our summer programs? How do we reach those things I talked about before? First of all, we want to make sure that students do have a broad overview of all of the engineering disciplines and aspects that are out there. So at Virginia Tech, we have everything. We have computer science, we have electrical, we have aerospace, we have ocean, we have civil, we have environmental, we have, I think, 13 or 14 different types of engineering, mining, 
industrial systems, material science, majors that most students have never heard of before. Um, and they may think they know what they involve, um, but engineers do everything that you can think of. They basically solve problems. Um, second thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that students understand the engineering design process. So that's, you've got a problem, you've got to brainstorm ways to solve it, build a model, build a prototype, see how it works. And when it fails, because it will fail, what do you do next? How do you go back, fix it, redo it, try again, start the whole process over again? We also want to give students the opportunity to connect with people here at Virginia Tech, with the faculty, with the staff, with current Virginia Tech students. And we want them to also meet other students that have similar interests. I grew up in a very rural, small town. Only a handful of people even went to college. And it really wasn't until I went off to college that I felt like I belonged. And there were other people around me that had similar interests. So we want to give them a chance to develop that network and those supports before they um, head off to college. It is really critical that a student be able to picture themselves on a college campus, on the campus of Virginia Tech. So um, we want them to be able to see what life as a college student is like and feel that it is possible, that it is doable for them. And then um, navigating the college admissions process. You know, when I applied to college, it was, I think, one piece of paper, front and back, handwritten, put it in an envelope and mailed it off. Um, it is nothing like that anymore. It can be a long, confusing, expensive process uh, to apply to college, and we want to make sure they have the tools that they need to do that successfully as well. So how are we going to reach those goals? First of all, we are very, very lucky. We have faculty and staff here at Virginia Tech that really do live the Utprosim model. Um, we rarely pay our faculty to help us out. They believe in what they are doing. They are passionate about what they do. They believe in the value of outreach and bringing the next generation of students to engineering. So uh, our faculty and staff led hands-on activities are really crucial to all of our camps. Almost all of our camps and the ones that I'm gonna talk about tonight or that we're gonna talk about tonight um, all involve some kind of engineering design project, usually encompassing 10 or more hours of the time that they are on the camp. Communication is also very important. So again, almost all of our camps end with a showcase where the students are gonna show up what they did and have to communicate and talk about that to other people. Um, I used to teach K-12 and I would always tell my students, I don't care how brilliant what you have up in your head is, if you cannot get that information out to other people, it's completely useless to everybody. The participants do live in the residence halls. They eat in our D2 dining hall. And so it is very empowering for them to know that they can live like a student. They can navigate the dining hall. They can get from one place on campus to the other. They learn where things are. Um, you know, they might learn where the laundry machines are. Uh, so they learn a lot about just being a student and believing that they can be a successful student. We do have our trained staff, and these are primarily undergraduate engineering students, although we have, do have students from other disciplines. Sometimes we have graduate students that actually live in the residence hall with, those, they, with the students. They serve as mentors. They um, organize evening and weekend, if they're here for a weekend, social events, really get to know them. They meet with campers every single night in small groups to talk about their experiences, to talk about how they're doing. Um, so we really want to, again, develop those connections. We do have additional college prep programming. So we will have someone from admissions, someone from financial aid, um, someone talk about the uh, having a growth mindset or um, mental health issues, um, talk about what their next steps, the college application process, all of those things. Many of our camps are free. Our camps that are not free do have scholarship money available. So please don't look at a particular camp and think that is just too much money. I can't afford it. Um, for most of the camps that do have a fee, the parent form 
is going to have questions asking you for some self-reported financial information, and we base our awards on those. Please do not let the cost prevent you or your child from applying to our programs. And at the at this time, we are holding all of our programs on the Blacksburg campus. They will all be in person. Um, so knock on wood um, that nothing extraordinary happens yet again with COVID, but the goal is very much to return to in-person programming. We've done it online for the past two years. I think we've done it successfully, but it is certainly not the optimum way of doing it. Um, anything I'm going to talk about tonight, we do have a very full um, website with lots of information, which I've put there on this slide. If you're not sure, if you just Google VT Seed, C E E D, it will pop up and you can look at the pre college and undergraduate programs. Um, on the left, this is the whole range of all of our programs. I'll touch on each of them a little bit, but focus on the ones that still have open application processes um, at this point in time. So this slide is just to kind of give you an idea of the ages that each camp um, covers. We start with middle school and go all the way, as I said, through undergraduate programs. A lot of them, as you can see, really do focus on um, the high school experience. And just keep in mind, as we're talking about these programs, we very often use the term a rising junior or senior or sophomore. Rising means the grade that the student will enter in the fall after this coming summer. So if your child is currently an eighth grader, they are going to be considered a rising ninth grader for the summer program. They will have completed eighth grade and be entering ninth grade in the fall. Okay, so I'm gonna start off, we're gonna start off kind of young to old and I'm gonna talk a little bit about imagination. Imagination is a week long camp. This is for our middle school students. So rising seventh and eighth graders. We're lucky this year to actually have three sessions of camp. Um, our first one is in June. This is the session that we will provide free bus transportation from Roanoke and then back to Roanoke in the afternoon. Um, our second camp, July, the second session, July 10th to 16th. For this one, we will be providing a bus that comes from Richmond on Sunday and then returns back to Richmond on Saturday. We know that transportation can be an expense, it can be an issue, um, and we want to make sure that um, that does not prevent someone from attending. We are lucky we have um, good sponsorship from the um, everybody listed below, but in particular for Richmond from the Bradley Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering to help us with that. And then our final session will be July 17th to 23rd. This is, it's new adding a third session this year. Um, the first two, we work with the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department and the students for that are going to make an LED color organ um, where the, Lights respond to music, and we're also hoping to um, have the ability for them to actually create their own music as well if they get to that point. Um, and, that, uh, and then the third week, we are very lucky. This is actually going to be a drone camp. So we've got sponsorship from Wing, which is the uh, Google subsidiary. It's a drone delivery company. Um, the Aerospace and Ocean Engineering Department, and then some other partners here at Virginia Tech. Um, and uh, they're going to build and fly a drone that they actually get to take home. Uh, we have both day camper and residential options. So the day camper, if you live locally or some parents prefer to come get a hotel room, Airbnb, stay and just drop their child off in the morning and pick them up in the afternoon. Um, we have about 60 students per week for day campers. Uh, it's $150. We provide lunch. And then for residential camp, we are providing room and board for the week. Uh, it is $650. And that includes all meals, um, basically everything that they need for that week-long stay. The application deadline is April 11th. And again, it's very, very important for us to recognize all of the um, groups that support this program um, and make it possible to have as many 
free scholarships and transportation options. Right, our second camp, I'm not gonna spend much time on this because as you can see, the application deadline has already passed. What we are really hoping to provide in SEED is a continuation of programs. So we start with middle school, last is for rising ninth and 10th graders. It is sponsored by the Virginia Space Grant Consortium Free. It's a shorter camp. Um, students come in on Sunday and leave on Wednesday, but it is currently um, the one camp we have for rising ninth graders and almost the only camp we have for rising 10th graders. CTEC squared, um, we're moving into our 11th and 12th grade options, does target young women. It will run from June 26th to July 9th this year. 64 students. This one does have a tuition cost and the application deadline is March 14th. One of the highlights of this particular program and BBT that Jessica is going to talk about is that we, General Electric does sponsor the design project. Um, they actually have General Electric engineers that do a kickoff on the first day of camp. Um, halfway through, they meet with the groups that are working on it, the team project. And then on the last day of the showcase, they actually bring engineers in. They judge the um, resulting projects. Um, the girls, the picture on the right is a group of three young women um, and their project. And they actually do give out um, for second and third place awards. Uh, the girls take this very seriously. There is no money attached to the prizes, but that doesn't keep them from staying up till three in the morning to make sure they do a good job on their projects. Uh, so uh, this is um, a great program targeting young women. And I'm going to let Jessica talk a little bit about BVT. So BVT um, is one of our newer camps. Um, it is another two-week camp for rising 11th and 12th graders. Um, geared towards African-American students. So this camp will run from July 17th up until the 30th. So that's pretty much the end of the summer. Um, it also has 64 students. Um, the cost of tuition is $2,000, but like Dr. Lester mentioned before, please don't let that, um, I guess, price tag scare you from wanting to apply. There are scholarships available. And the application deadline for this camp is March 21st. And the same thing that she explained before, um, in terms of the general electric, electric sponsorship and the project that they'll be doing will be the same thing and will mimic C-Tech squared. Um, along with this, we'll be having the students do other things that'll also highlight uh, the African-American experience at Virginia Tech and within um, engineering. So we'll talk about different things with the students like financial literacy. We'll talk about um, the My Next Steps program that I hosted last year for the students. So the students will have two weeks to create their specific plan on what they're going to do, where they're going to go to college, when they're going to apply, make a whole timeline and everything. So by the time they get back to school, they're prepared and they know exactly what they need to do. Um, and then we have other sessions where we kind of just explore Blacksburg and show them other things around campus that may be a uh, resource to them uh, as a student of color and for the College of Engineering. All right. I'm also only going to briefly talk about Tech Girls. This is a program. It's actually a three-week program um, sponsored by the U.S. State Department. They bring in 118 international high school students, literally. Um, the program has expanded, and this summer it will be literally from all over the world, every corner of the globe that you can think of. Um, the Virginia Tech part of this camp will run from July 10th and 23rd. Um, the reason that I do put this up is uh, to let everyone know that in addition to the international students, they do also take um, U.S. students to serve as U.S. ambassadors who, uh, free of charge, get to participate in the camp as well. This one is set up a little bit differently rather than exploring the very broad range of engineering applications and doing a design project. They actually participate in a two-week technology class. Um, the topics can be varied. Um, last year, we did web design. We've done cybersecurity. Last year, we did 3D modeling, um, very often coding. Uh, there's, so there's a broad range of classes that the students can participate in. 
Um, unfortunately, the deadline to apply to be a U.S. ambassador was back in January. Um, and we also do spend time with these students, again, talking about admissions, giving them the college perspective by having them talk with faculty and current students. Uh, and we also work with uh, Hokie Wellness to, again, talk about um, having a growth mindset. The JROT STEM Leadership Academy, another one that's a little more narrowly defined. Uh, it is required that students here in this camp are part of their high school, Army, JROTC program, um, specifically the 4th Brigade, although the 4th Brigade stretches all the way from Delaware to South Carolina, so it's probably going to encompass most of the people on this call. They do about a half day in um, doing a STEM project and the other half of the day in military leadership. So they do things like the rappel tower and the obstacle course and the high ropes course and archery and things like that. Um, it is very large. It's got almost 400 participants and runs that last week in June. For this, the participants must already be in their high school army JROTC program. So it's not an open application process. Um, and our next one up is Pathways, and I'm going to let Perry talk about that. Yeah, so our Pathways program, uh, uh, as with our other programs, will return in person this year. Uh, the last two years have been virtual. Uh, we are uh, hosting camp July 17th through 30th. Um, our camp is limited to first-generation students. And our definition of first generation is that neither uh, parent graduated from a four-year institution. Uh, we do focus on the state of Virginia. Uh, um, and the, uh, as with the other camps, we focus heavily on a design project. Uh, the past couple of years, we partnered with the Virginia Department of Transportation, uh, looking at a problem they were uh, facing and our students worked with engineers uh, with VDOT to propose ideas. Um, uh, and again, this was in a virtual environment. This year to change things up, we're doing um, uh, something called Star Wars STEM. And so what we'll be doing is looking at the science fiction technology found in the Star Wars franchise and looking at how um, some of that technology is becoming reality. Uh, so our students will uh, we're anticipating building lightsabers. Uh, we're going to do some structural engineering uh, related to building a Death Star, um, at least a small version of one. Natalia there is thinking we're actually building something larger. I saw that, Natalia. Uh, but we're doing uh, miniature models of Death Stars there to focus on structure, structural engineering. Uh, we're going to work on voice-activated droids. And so the idea is, is to look at the... Uh, snapshots of life that you see in Star Wars and looking at how some of that's becoming reality. Um, the program is free. Uh, so again, this in, in includes uh, the stay on campus and uh, all the supplies needed, uh, uh, room and board, et cetera. Uh, the uh, deadline for this is March 1st. We host a cohort of up to 180 total. Ideally, these are three cohorts of 60 students. Uh, the last thing that I'll mention about Pathways that, that um, uh, I guess hopefully is a good selling point for our program. Uh, in our timeline, we really try to make this uh, that our Pathways cohorts are cohorts that we track as they come to Virginia Tech uh, and provide support with them uh, as they come to Tech and, and beyond. Um, our first cohort is in its second year at Virginia Tech. Uh, and so literally we are uh, developing the program uh, as we track this first cohort. Um, another thing that I will mention is we are doing some virtual aspects of camp beyond the in-person camp. Uh, one benefit of uh, two years of experiencing Zoom is that we've recognized that it does help us to overcome distance. So albeit, well, it's not the optimal way to engage, um, pr prior to COVID, uh, our FaceTime with students was on uh, camp and some other limited engagements on campus. Uh, we are working to develop something called Maker Mondays, uh, where we will have our uh, Pathways cohort, in fact, uh, some of our other pre-college programs, 
gather on Mondays to do uh, collaborative designing and building. Uh, we are also working on a new initiative starting next week called Math Mondays, uh, where we will provide some support um, to students in uh, uh, upper level math courses in, in uh, middle school and high school. Uh, again, um, welcome any support to pass us along to potentially eligible students. Uh, you can find us on the SEED website and the application is accessible through there. And uh, again, that's all I have for Pathways. All right, uh, and the next program, although it's not a typically a pre-college program, is our STEP Summer Bridge program. This is one important way that we do support uh, entering freshmen to make sure that they have a successful experience while they're here um, at Virginia Tech. And I am going to let Taylor. I'm going to let yes, Taylor talk. About Yes, yeah, so um, thank you for that mini introduction, Kim. Um, yes, yeah, so the Student Transition Engineering Program step takes place over five weeks, um, and it's designed to help students transition from high school into college. So a lot of those aspects of time management, um, getting to know Blacksburg, getting to know the campus, uh, taking some or, or the courses are all encompassed with the experience. This year, it's running from June 26th to July 29th. Um, and the students will take a calculus course, chemistry course, and then an engineering fundamentals course um, that parallels what they will be getting within their first year of engineering coursework. Um, they interact with their peers through social events and other interactions of course instructors um, for those courses and then industry representatives. So we have them come in, work with the students on different projects or um, case studies and the students get to interact with people in industry. And a lot of the times they're step alumni. Um, so it's been um, interesting to see that interaction and see what pieces of knowledge they can pass down to the students. Um, we also have seminars from different resources on campus such as Hokie Wellness, which was mentioned prior, um, the Student Success Center, um, call, or Career and Professional Services. Um, so, those are all encompassed within the program. And these courses, the courses within the program are not for credit. Um, so these students have the experience of taking these courses at a um, relatively fast pace, considering it's five weeks, um, and experiencing tests and homework and things in the environment in which they can learn from their mistakes and hopefully start the fall semester on a um, good note knowing what they might want to change rel relative to how they performed in the summer. Um, the cost for the program is $3,000, um, and that includes room and board, uh, food, and other activities that we have within the five weeks. And um, it's not listed on the slide, but I updated it recently. The application deadline is May 1st. Um, and as Jessica said, don't let the $3,000 uh, dissuade you from applying. Um, we, uh, there is financial assistance available for STEP, but the students must submit a FAFSA uh, to Virginia Tech to qualify so that we can get that data and do uh, adjust the costs accordingly. All right. So I am, although this is not a summer program, I wanna briefly talk about two other programs. Um, one of them is our VT NSB pre-college initiative. Um, and I'm gonna let Jessica take this one as well. Yes. Um, one thing I wanted to mention about what Taylor just said. So the FAFSA application part is just for step, not for the rest of the summer camp. So don't worry about the FAFSA if your you know, student isn't isn't doing step, just to make sure to clarify that piece. Um, so yes. BT Nesby PCI. Um, so I've been running PCI for the past four years, I think, three or four years. Um, so this is a great program and it's hosted on Saturdays. So um, we have the National Society of Black Engineers at Virginia Tech. So it's about four of us who um, come and plan these events and we have different themes each month. We have lab tours, hands-on activities, college ready presentations, and just to have the students be submersed in the different majors, have them explore all 
the different 14 disciplines that Virginia Tech has to offer. So we accept middle school and high school students. Um, sometimes we even have some elementary school students trickle in sometimes. Um, so we also have a part where the students have their own program and the parents have their own program too. Um, so within the parents program, we don't do it every month. We only do it during the months that we have enough parents who would like to participate in this program. Um, we talk about FAFSA, financial aid. We talk about um, scholarship information. We talk about the College of Engineering in general, having student panels um, so that the students can give their perspectives on their experiences and things like that. Um, this uh, is completely free. So we provide breakfast and lunch. So usually students get to eat lunch on campus, which they love to do. Um, and there's no, well, usually there's no participation limit, but however, due to COVID, we are capping it at about um, 50 students. Um, so the first 50 students who sign up will be able to attend. Um, we do have the mask requirement and everything like that. So the dates that we have for this upcoming, um, this spring is February 19th. So the application for this had already passed. Um, it ended last week. So we're talk we're going to be focused on mechanical engineering and material and science engineering. Um, and then on March 19th, we're going to be focusing on aerospace and ocean engineering. And for those who are already signed up on the PCI listserv, we had to change the date. That announcement didn't come out yet, but it'll be coming out pretty soon. Um, so the date that was announced to you all previously was um, April 23rd, but we'll be changing that to April 16th. Um, and that's going to be our uh, big tailgate day. And then we'll be focusing on, I believe, chemical engineering that day. I have to double check, but I believe it's chemical engineering that day that will be chemical and mining. I believe that's what we'll be focusing on during those days. And one other program that occurs during the academic year is our RISE program. This does start with the spring of a student's sophomore year and we do one event per semester through the fall of senior year. Um, in the spring this year, our sophomores will be invited again, like Jessica talked about with the PCI students, to the spring football game. We do a tailgate ahead of time. They get to do a hands-on project in our studio maker space in our living learning community. Um, they do some lab tours. Then for our juniors, current juniors, we invite them to attend the Engineering Open House, which is held on Monday, April 4th. Um, we want them to get the full day experience, so we actually bring have them come in on Saturday, April 3rd. We do some programming on the 3rd. We um, eat in one of the dining halls, uh, do a student panel, go enjoy bowling and pool and uh, table tennis at the break zone. Um, we do also do some occasional online programs like um, essay writing. We've done the cybersecurity capture the flag. Um, it's 80 per grade. The cost is free. We do provide bus transportation from certain areas. So we do have a bus um, that will uh, start in Hampton, stop in Richmond, and then we have another bus that comes from um, Northern Virginia, uh, depends on where the kids come from. We've done Alexandria, we've done Woodbridge, we've done Manassas. Uh, and then when it is an overnight event, we do provide a hotel room. Um, students are put in double, so they will have a roommate. The application deadline for this one is March 7th. This is the one program that is not listed on the SEED website. So if that's something that you think you are interested in, I would get your phone out and take a picture of that QR code so you can get to the website. Um, and actually, the bottom picture on this screen has Jessica in it. And this is from that tailgate. Oh, I don't, it must have been at least three years ago now, if not more than that. Um, uh, outside in Eggleston Quad, enjoying some tailgating and the hooky bird before the game. And one last thing that I want to mention is that many of our high school programs, or the ones listed here, BVT, CTEC Squared, RISE, and Pathways, do allow students to apply to participate in a program called Fall Visitation. Fall Visitation is actually run by admissions. There are GPA and um, SAT requirements, although the SAT has been waived the past couple of years, in order to participate in this. Um, we tag on to this, but it is not SEEDS programming. Um, the cool thing is, is that the participants in this program 
are invited to come to one of the fall open house weekends. Um, depends, different programs come on different uh, weekends. One is October, one is November. They are given a hotel room for themselves and one parent. If they complete, if they meet those requirements and they complete their college application by an early deadline, typically the end of September for the October event or mid-October for the November event, at the conclusion of the program on Sunday, they are actually given a letter and on that letter is an admissions decision. That does not mean that if you attend one of these programs and attend fall visitation, you are going to get an offer of admissions. You get a decision, and that decision could be an offer. It could be a wait list or a hold. Um, typically, they if as long as you meet these requirements, you are not going to get a deny at that point, but they may very likely say, you know, we're going to hold off on a final decision and see what the full pool of applicants looks like before we decide. Um, so it is an opportunity to receive an admissions decision um, way back in the fall and uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot less stress later on. You will not get your financial aid package at that point. It is not an early binding decision. So it does not mean that you get that decision, you must accept it, before you know what your financial aid or other offers are going to be um, with this decision, you still have until May 1 to decide whether or not you want to accept that offer. And I will say that just overall, being part of a pipeline program is a plus. Being part of a Virginia Tech pipeline program is a plus on your college application. Virginia Tech, we know that the students that attend these programs and then apply to be part of Virginia Tech they already have a good idea what to expect and whether or not they really want to be part of the program. Um, so it does give you a boost in, um, in the acceptance. I, there are certainly other programs outside of the College of Engineering, and this is another one where you might wanna get your phone and grab that QR code. I do maintain a spreadsheet list of all of the STEM and diversity summer programs at Virginia Tech that I am aware of, and I keep it updated. Um, so certainly SEED, those are all the programs in purple, um, the Office of um, Admissions and um, Diversity and Inclusion also runs the Black College and Hispanic College Institutes. The College of Science has a number of summer camps this year. And the College of Architecture does as well. There are some other ones. I'm just waiting for additional information to post those. But if you grab that QR code, bookmark that, um, you'll be have access to all of the STEM and diversity programs, summer programs that I'm aware of at Virginia Tech. So um, I'm going to open it up to uh, Natalia. And I know there have been a few things popping up in the chat. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And Natalia, um, I'm gonna let you ask us questions. So our first question is, what's the age group for Tech Girls? So Tech Girls is high school students. So ninth through 12th, uh, they do have an application process for those US ambassadors, but any high school student. And then for Imagination, if the camp was free and where they can find the information and application. So again, if you Google VT Seed, C-E-E-D, the, um, all of the, the pre-college programs are gonna pop up. And if you go to that website, um, you will see, you know, you just click on the link to the application. Um, the, the Imagination Camp is not free. It is $150 for day campers, 650 for residential. But I will also say because of the sponsorship, um, there are more scholarships for that program than any other. We do have through, um, through, the college, through the electrical and computer engineering department, we have 20 full scholarships for Richmond students, and we have 20 full scholarships for um, Martinsville, Henry County students. Uh, we also often work with Franklin City 
uh, to provide free scholarships as well. But again, we have other scholarship money, so please don't let that prevent you. Um, but we have a lot of scholarship money for imagination. And then this question, I believe, was directed for RISE. How many students per room? So if they were to stay in the hotel. Oh, two students per room. Um, and I do, although uh, I during summer camps, I do tend to want students to not room with their friends so that they can expand their network for the RISE program because it's just an overnight. Um, I do honor roommate requests. Now, I will also say, and the boys more than the girls, every year that we do it in person, I get at least one group of young men that say, could all four of us room together? Would that be okay? And if that's what you want to do, as long as I get an email from every one of those students saying, yeah, we, we just, we want to have fun. We want to cram into one room. Um, I'm happy to do that as well. But generally it's two students per room um, for the RISE program. Um, and then another one, do you think the BLAST application will open back up if not at capacity? Um, the BLAST application will not open back up because it is a completely free program. They get a, a tremendous number of applications. Um, it is, the BLAST program is taxpayer funded. So you're, if you're a Virginia resident, some of your money is going into that. Um, they will not open it up again. Another question is how many per room for imagination? So for residential students. Yeah, those are also doubles. And that is the case for BVT, for CTEC, I think probably for Pathways as well. Um, all of our camps are, are pretty much doubles. We typically house them uh, for the pre-college programs. We do house them in um, air-conditioned traditional dorms. So it's kind of going to be that long hallway with lots of double rooms off it and, you know, a bathroom somewhere along the hallway. Another one is any other options for rising ninth and 10th grade? Um, unfortunately, no. Uh, I will tell you that every time somebody, you know, asks me about where, you know, what, what, what do I need? What would I like to have? I will say that I would like to have additional options for that age range. You know, we're able to present many sessions of imagination. We've got a lot of different options for the high school students. Um, last is the only one I currently have for the ninth, tenth, ninth and 10th graders. Um, although Perry's Pathways program is for 10th graders as well. How is money handled? All right. Um, so for those camps that do have tuition costs, um, we, once we have put out offers and the offer has been accepted, we send that information to the Virginia Tech Bursar's office. And so the parent will be billed directly from the Bursar's office. You will get a paper bill in the mail. You cannot pay it online. You must pay it by mail. That is the only way that they will allow you to do it. We do not require a you know, a down payment or anything like that. Um, and it non-payment or not getting it in, I don't look at that, okay? I want students to come. I am not going to prevent anybody from, you know, if you show up, if we give you an offer and you show up, I'm not looking back at the bursar's office and figuring out who paid and who didn't pay. I trust you. I want the student there. Um, so it is not going to prevent you from, the parent side of things, I will say that if you do not pay the, the paper that the bursar sends you on time, um, they do start charging late fees. So I wouldn't mess around with that. Um, but there's not a deposit. You're not going to lose your money. If it turns out that you're not able to attend, there's some kind of last minute emergency. Um, I just reach back out to the bursar's office and I say, please cancel the bill for this person. They weren't able to attend. So there's no penalty. Another question is, what are the scholarships based off of? So when you submit the application, it is going to generate an email response that is going to have a link to a parent form. And then on that parent form, there's a question that says, 
will pay their full tuition or we are requesting scholarship support. If you press the button that says we want scholarship support, it'll open up a few other questions. They are all self-reported. So it is going to ask you, uh, you know, what are the other dependents? What is your estimated annual income? What are the special circumstances that, you know, that you have that you are requesting additional support? Um, and we base it off of that self-reported information. Um, again, that is for the pre-college programs. As Taylor said, for the STEP program, because they are enrolled freshmen, they do have to submit the official FAFSA, which is the financial aid request form. Um, this question is to clarify, is the only option for rising 10th graders and not first generation college student is black? Correct. And then is imagination 150 per day? No, it is $150 for the entire week, which you can't get a babysitter for $150 for an entire week. Um, and that does include lunch. The day typically runs from 9 a.m. till 4.30 or 8.30 to 4.30. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and it does include lunch and we take care of them all day. So $150 for the week. And they get an event t-shirt too. I think that's all we have as of right now. All right. So we are at 755. I'm happy to, we're happy to answer any other questions you might have. We are recording this. So we'll make sure um, to post that and I'll get that out to my contact list. Is there one more question? I believe the question this person had asked was clarifying that the rising 10th graders was the only camp that was blocked. Correct. Do students keep their own money? Yes. Now, for these residential camps, the only thing that you might spend your money on is, you know, a Virginia Tech t-shirt, you know, some kind of swag. Um, below the D2 dining hall, there is like a little convenience store um, and students are allowed to get snacks there. Um, if you need to do your laundry, you might want to bring a few quarters so that you can do your laundry. Um, but we are not going to, unless a parent requests, we are not going to hold um, a student's money. We are going to, they will be in charge of that. Although I am happy to work with any um, special requests that a parent might have. And very often, if there are any issues that a parent is concerned about, um, certainly talk to me. And then very often, I will bring that student's RA in on the conversation um, so they can stay in close contact with the parent and um, uh, take care of any concerns or issues that they might have. All right. Well, I'm going to thank my co-presenters tonight and thank all of the um, parents and families and students that showed up. Um, it is easy to get a hold of us. Go to VTCED, C-E-E-D, and um, we're happy to uh, answer any questions that you might have.